Electric cars are about to see some serious competition. Hyundai is working on some next-level technology that could change cars forever. They're working on a state-of-the-art engine that charges much faster, gives huge range, and is also much cheaper to make. And Hyundai is getting ready to start selling a brand new car with this engine as soon as 2025. The Korean automobile giant says it's about to shatter all norms, disrupt the electric vehicle industry, and redefine the future of mobility with its revolutionary new hydrogen engine. Yes, hydrogen, the fuel of tomorrow, that has been creating buzz lately. Toyota, BMW, and now even Hyundai is going to invest heavily in it. But in this video, I won't just be raving about how hydrogen is better as per these claims we can show you. We will compare it with gasoline and EVs, take a look at powerful figures, production hurdles, range, and much more to tell you about the clear, undisputed winner. Electric cars versus hydrogen cars. Which is better? After all, if hydrogen is so good, why aren't we all scooting around in our hydrogen cars yet? Why is it that the government has always preferred EVs over hydrogen? Is there more to this story than what meets the eye? Uh, that's a big yes. Before we begin, be sure to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon, and off we go! Back in 2003, President George W. Bush announced a significant investment in hydrogen technology allocating $1.2 billion over five years to develop hydrogen-powered vehicles, fuel cells, and infrastructure. This was the same time when vehicle emissions were soaring and we were waking up to the reality of pollution as a global threat to mankind. This initiative, called the Hydrogen Fuel Initiative, aimed to accelerate the commercialization of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, reduce America's dependence on foreign oil, and tackle environmental concerns. But you might be shocked to know that hydrogen cars go way back, and I mean way back. In 1966, we got some legendary cars like the Porsche 911s, the Lamborghini Miura, and the Pontiac GTO. But what never made it to spotlight that year was this. World's first hydrogen fuel cell car. Here's exactly what happens. Hydrogen fuel cells run off pressurized hydrogen, which is kept inside these vehicles. Unlike an EV, which takes hours to charge fully, refueling a hydrogen vehicle only takes a few minutes. Over the years, many hydrogen cars have come and gone. Companies make claims like zero emissions, only water coming out of the exhaust, no pollution whatsoever. But hold that thought. While this does sound great on paper, hydrogen hasn't really been kind to us. While hydrogen did seem excellent on paper, there are a few reasons why hydrogen cars lost traction. Number one, price. Number two, performance. Three, convenience. Four, the environment. And five, competition. Yes, we're looking at you, Tesla. But things are about to change now. With modern day technology, we now have the ability to overcome these key hurdles which stood in the way and possibly even make all those claims come true. But what exactly is Hyundai doing to achieve this? Hyundai's plans with hydrogen. We know that Hyundai isn't really the name that comes to mind when you think of hydrogen cars. Unlike Toyota, this brand has no hard feelings against EVs and even has some of the best EVs out there. The Ioniq 6, in fact, was voted the world's car of the year just back in March. Now let's jump back to the year 2000, when Y2 2K was on everybody's mind and Britney Spears was still topping the charts. Hyundai introduced the Santa Fe FC EV, their first prototype fuel cell vehicle. And when I say prototype, it was literally a Santa Fe with a 75 kilowatt fuel cell squeezed under the hood. The range? a measly 100 miles. They didn't stop there though. In 2004, the Tucson FC EV made its debut, packed with an 80 kilowatt fuel cell and a boosted range of 152 miles. Then, in 2005, Hyundai rolled out the second-gen Tucson FC EV with an improved 100-kilowatt fuel cell, offering a range of 186 miles and a top speed of 99 miles per hour. But here's where things get interesting. In 2013, Hyundai's love for hydrogen manifested into the Tucson iX35 FC EV, the world's first mass-produced hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. It was like a science experiment gone right. A 100 kilowatt fuel cell, 369 miles of range, and a 100 mile per hour top speed. The sales weren't exactly Tesla numbers, but it was a start. Then in 2018, Hyundai said, hold my beer, and introduced the Nexo. It's slick, it's stylish, and guess what? It boasts a 95 kilowatt fuel cell and a range of 380 miles. Plus, it can hit 111 miles per hour. So it was good that the IIHS gave it their Top Safety Pick Plus Award, the first for a hydrogen-powered vehicle. 
The sales numbers were also impressive. In 2022, global hydrogen car sales rose by 8.8% to a total of 16,195 units, from 14,789 units a year ago. Hyundai was able to secure the top spot in hydrogen car sales in the first 10 months of 2022. The closest competitor for the brand is the Mirai, which is Toyota's FCEV. Year-by-year -year data also shows that Hyundai has been making significant gains since 2018 compared to the competition. Okay, okay, we get the idea. Hyundai did a good job. But given brands like Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai are aiming to ultimately compete with Tesla, they will need to tenfold increase in current sales, which is a huge feat unto itself. To facilitate this, these brands have also been offering heavy discounts to incentivize people to buy their cars. For example, in California, the Mirai was available at a 65% discount from its $50,000 list price. Furthermore, to sweeten the deal further, automakers have offered a $15,000 fuel credit for the first three years of operation. So imagine this, a $50,000 car for less than $20,000 with 100,000 kilometers of free fuel. It seems like Hyundai Motor Group chairman Yu Sun Chung has been bitten by the hydrogen bug. Along with pouring money into electric vehicles and robotics, he's also throwing some serious coin at hydrogen-based technology. The aim is to introduce a whole slew of hydrogen-based mobility solutions by 2040. And while this might put Hyundai at odds with other automakers who are going all in on electric, they've got a plan. As Sehun Kim, head of Hyundai Motors Fuel Cell Center put it, for the perfect realization of net zero, we need electric and hydrogen. It's good to have two cards in your hand. So unlike other car makers, Hyundai is not just relying on one category, but instead showing interest in both, or hedging their bets, as we say. Interestingly enough, South Korea has the most hydrogen cars on the road compared to any other country. Hyundai plans to produce at least 500,000 hydrogen cars annually starting in 2030. They are also creating an H2 pilot city in Ulsan, a coastal hub that's set to be a hydrogen wonderland. They've got plans for a plant with an annual capacity of 13,000 tons of liquefied hydrogen, a 200-kilometer hydrogen pipeline system, and about 67,000 fuel cell cars on the road by 2030. But it's not all rainbows and hydrogen bubbles. The first and probably the biggest pain point is the lack of refueling infrastructure. As of December 2022, there were only 107 hydrogen fueling stations. Apparently, they cost like $2 million to build. The next issue is the energy efficiency problem of hydrogen batteries. Take an example of Toyota's latest hydrogen engine. It's based on the 5-liter V8 engine from the Lexus RCF and then modified to run on hydrogen. Here we will compare three engines. First will be Toyota's Mirai, which is another popular hydrogen car, then the Lexus RCF, on which Toyota's new H2 engine is based, and then their new engine itself. Both the Mirai and the RCF offer similar range and also have similarly sized trunks. Now imagine if you wanted a sports car like the RCF that runs on hydrogen. So let's say you fill its tank, all 17.4 gallons of it, with hydrogen. Since hydrogen has to be compressed at nearly 10,000 PSI before storage, first it will be tough to make a pressurized chamber that is safe enough to store it. Mirai's has a 142 liter tank in which it can only store about 5.6 kilos of hydrogen. So in the RCF with a 17.5 gallon tank, we will only be able to fill about 2.6 kilos of hydrogen. This much hydrogen can only take you 50 miles, and that's when you're driving with a light foot. If you need to reach the ideal range of about 300, this is how many tanks you will need your car to have as per another channel called Engineering Explain. Now that's a lot, and the RCF's tank size is not even half that. Comparatively, batteries need less space while offering better range and performance too. To combat these problems of hydrogen storage, Hyundai plans to start liquidating the hydrogen instead of using it as a gas. By condensing the hydrogen, you can improve its storage capacity by 75%. Ah, but there's a pickle here. It needs to be at minus 253 degrees, yes, that low, to be condensed. And since not all of us are living a thousand feet below the Arctic, that's not something feasible. When BMW tried to do something similar with their Hydrogen 7, it started to leak fuel. After about 17 hours, this car started to vent out the fuel. Your fuel tank would be completely empty eventually when the car is sitting. So as of now, none of the current solutions are good enough to deliver on the hype, which is why Hyundai's claims might just only be about marketing to gain attention and not something which will destroy the EV industry. 
Nonetheless, they are still making slow progress and are positive about their approach. Since the launch of the iX35 in 2013, Hyundai now has an updated version on sale as well as a next generation Nexo. While we applaud Hyundai for not following the herd and going all in on hydrogen engines, you can agree that this fuel option still has some potential if the technology favors us in the future. Who knows, with proper advancement and technique, we might see hydrogen soaring in popularity and maybe even becoming one of the three conventional fuels we have today. With this, we put an end to the video, but be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We keep bringing you the latest and greatest from all corners of the automotive industry. Thanks for watching.